Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is John Margo, uh, BD lead at Phantom. Uh, joining us today, of course, Ruder. Hello, I'm Ruder, founder of Sweeland. Fantastic. Uh, today, we're going to be uh, exploring uh, our shared experience on um, our experiences of working with Solana, working uh, and kind of bridging out into SUI thereafter. Um, any other context before we kind of hop into it? Let's jump right in. Awesome. Okay. So I think uh, for the first uh, point here that we want to explore is really just maybe performance and scalability. Um, coming from Solana, what is it about Sui's approach to scaling or performance that drew you to build there, um, you know, uh, building, you know, save, and then thereafter, uh, Sui land? Yeah, I mean, I think um, the first thing that really drew us in was actually the Move smart contracting language. I think it makes a lot of sense. There's, uh, you know, so many issues with pass iterations like uh, Solidity on Ethereum and Solana Rust, which is just easy to shoot yourself in the foot. Um, and it wasn't until later, actually, that I was very pleasantly surprised by how impressive uh, Mistin's engineering team is. And, you know, the, f the fact that they um, wrote a paper and shipped a, a novel consensus mechanism in like just a year was very impressive. And the fact that it actually worked so well in production um, like whenever I uh, do a swap or a lending protocol action on Sui, it's just the only way I can describe it is that it's super snappy. Um, it just works. It's super quick and it doesn't hang as it, it does oftentimes uh, on Solana. So I think that's super attractive for building products, um, especially a more complicated one. Like we have some, a lot of firsthand experience building a more complicated uh, product on Solana that just didn't really work and it couldn't take off because the final product experience was kind of subpar. But I think if we were to do it on Sui, it would actually work much better. That product was dumpy.fun. It was a platform for shorting meme coins and it would um, do a bunch of things. It would do a, an aggregator swap. It would do a lending, flash loan, repay all in one go. And it just like wasn't really working very well. So just, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, from, from the phantom side of things, you know, user experience is of the utmost importance to us. And one of the things that we really love about Sui is the fact that, you know, the transactions are buttery smooth, right? That is extremely important, especially when you're talking about, uh, users specifically retail that have become accustomed to a web two like experience. Um, that is something that is, you know, front of mind and, uh, you know, we value very much. Um, uh, anything else to add before we kind of hop onto the next point? Um, no, I think that's about it. Fantastic, fantastic. So uh, one of the interesting points that we get often, especially here at the, the conference today, is people kind of um, exploring the uh, ecosystem maturity. Um, one of the uh, points that is kind of top of mind for us is, you know, you were building in, I guess, what could be characterized as the early days of Solana. Um, you know, you uh, thereafter kind of moved to, to Sui. Um, are there any similarities in the maturity of the two ecosystems? Yeah, there's so many similarities. I think like Sui last year really reminded me of Solana in 2021. Um, it was a small ecosystem, just a couple of builders. Everyone kind of got to know each other pretty quickly, especially at like the flagship conference. We all met each other. Both happened at, you know, on Solana and on Sui. And one thing we're talking about here is like the liquidity aspect. Like I remember building on Solana early on and everyone was saying like, but there's no liquidity on Solana, like all the, all the liquidity is on Ethereum. And, you know, I couldn't really say much to them. It's just like, you know, believe me, like one day it'll get better. And one day today it has gotten a lot better, right? The liquidity on Solana is growing a ton. And like, if anything, it's like shrinking on Ethereum. And I wouldn't be surprised if at one point the liquidity on Solana is deeper than on Ethereum. And so a similar thing was happening on Sui in the early days where people were saying like, you know, there's not much liquidity on Sui. But I think the last year has really uh, is proving those people wrong as liquidity continues to grow. Interesting. I'm curious to explore that topic a little bit further. What do you think is the main driver of the liquidity growth on a new ecosystem? Obviously, you draw the parallel from Ethereum to Solana. What do you think is kind of the next step that's you know really driving the growth of liquidity on chain? Yeah, I think um, liquidity and like TVL is kind of a lagging indicator, and it comes after uh, the fact. Uh, and then it sticks around for a very long time, uh, even if like things aren't really moving forward that much. Um, as for the main driver, I'd say it's hard to pinpoint a single main driver. The thing, the beautiful thing about 
crypto and like an L1 is that it can support any kind of application from AI to meme coins to NFTs to music to gaming, et cetera. So each of those is, uh, you know, a gate to bring people in and you kind of need a, a combination. Um, you do get these cycles. So like, you know, NFTs was a really big driver of growth on Solana. I think it brought a ton of liquidity in where, um, you know, a lot of capital came in to buy NFTs and then they made their profits and they later rotated that into say meme coins. And like, that's why the meme coin cycle, there would be no meme coin cycle on Solana without an NFT cycle before that, right? And, you know, I think in similar ways on SWE, like there would be no X without like the, all the airdrops that are happening right now with like Walrus and Deep and other things, right? So um, yeah, I think slowly but surely, uh, we'll get there. Interesting. Um, I think the heuristic that I heard which encapsulates it very well is that adoption begets volume and volume begets liquidity. So, you know, if there's volume, there's going to be a natural, um, you know, demand for liquidity to kind of fill that vacuum. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I'm curious to pivot now to maybe uh, developer tooling. Um, talk to me a little bit about the differences between the ecosystems of developer tooling. Of course, there's um, you know major difference between the languages. Of course, you can also draw the fractal to the Ethereum ecosystem. I'm curious you have experience building in, in, in all three of them actually. So I'd be curious to hear you know your take on uh, specifically you know the difference between Solana and uh, Sui, as well as of course if you could add some context around Ethereum as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, as you mentioned, I have experience with uh, Ethereum Solidity, Solana Rust, and Sui Move. Um, on Solidity, I'd say it's very easy to pick up, but it was kind of, you know, not designed for the production use cases that we're seeing today, right? There are many things wrong with the language, many which like precipitate in all of the DeFi hacks that we see. Like a lot of them are, you know, potentially preventable with a, a better like design language. Um, the problem on Solana is that it's uh, super low level. And honestly, I find Rust is not the like, prettiest language to read and write. Um, and I think that has uh, impacts uh, when on, on like developer speed, right? Which then impacts morale and just, it's just added friction. Um, whereas Move is just so much nicer. And um, one anecdote from our team is that everyone who's worked on both Solana and then Sui they don't really want to go back to working on Solana. Mm -hmm. Like whenever some uh, project on Solana comes up, they'll, they'll kind of try to get someone else to work on it so that they can keep doing Sui stuff. And I think the reason for that is that it's like, you know, they can code faster. Um, there's less overhead, less friction, and it's just like a more enjoyable experience overall. Interesting. Interesting. So I'm, I'm curious, um, at, like for the marginal new builder that's joining and exploring the different, uh, you know, chains and kind of performing the analysis, okay, where do I want to build? How do you think, you know, as they open up the tab where, you know, they do the research on Solana and the tab where they do the research on Sui, how do you think their experiences as they kind of go through that process of learning and understanding and, you know, the tooling that's available to them? Yeah, well, one of the biggest drivers of that decision is uh, distribution and market. And like, obviously right now, Solana has, has it, right? Like it's got a huge market, a ton of eyeballs, um, but that's changing on Sui as things grow. Uh, but if it was like a purely technical, like merit-based decision, I do think that a lot more people would be choosing Sui. Like if you had the choice, why wouldn't you pick a, you know, a more strongly typed language that like, you know, takes all of the learnings of the last decade and implements them, right? Um, I think it's kind of a, a no-brainer. Interesting, interesting. Um, I think I want to explore a little bit more about you know, the user profiles. Um, have you noticed a difference in the user profiles and perhaps you know, the culture of you know, uh, the users uh, between the two ecosystems? Um, yeah, I guess there's like one difference, which is also kind of a similarity in a sense, which is like on Solana in the early days, there's a joke that Solana users are poor and Solana is the poverty chain, right? And that's because it was just a new ecosystem and there was no wealth effect yet. Now Solana users are rich. Like anyone who's been there around for, been around for a while, like they have wallets they've forgotten about with like a couple thousand dollars worth of soul that was just dust like a year ago, right? Um, and so we're kind of in that phase on Sui right now where um, people are poor again. 
so that's like a difference where, you know, if you're building products on Sphere right now, you have to keep that in mind. Like your users are not fine with like uh, throwing large amounts of money around. Like if you do an NFT mint, you have to price it much, much lower. Uh, like I remember, for example, we had the, the Rootlet NFT mint last year and we priced it at 100 SWE, which was $100 at the time. And we got so much FUD, like everyone was saying it's way too expensive, like this isn't gonna go anywhere, like you really need to lower the price. And it's just funny, like comparing that to NFT mints on Ethereum that would go for like five, dollars $10,000, right? Yeah. So yeah, that, that's like one difference right now in the culture. Interesting, interesting. Um, one uh, maybe perhaps final point that I wanna touch on is your experience working uh, with the foundation. And of course I can um, you know, add, add our piece uh, afterwards, but I'm curious to hear um, you know, in terms of resourcing, communication, how's your general experience been working with the foundations of, this, of both? Yeah, I'd say working with foundations have been slightly different. I think both have been very helpful. On uh, Solana, they would be helpful with like uh, some marketing, like Anatoly would often engage with my tweets. He would retweet our announcements and such. Um, but there wasn't really much uh, like financial support or anything like that. Um, on SWE, I think it's, it's really awesome. Like they, uh, they've helped us with PR stuff, which is a more like um, suits type thing, right? Like we're, we're more used to just doing all of our marketing on, on Twitter and it's really nice getting into like traditional uh, publications. Um, and then of course there's the uh, DeFi incentive program, which has been like super helpful in, in bootstrapping things. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd say like overall on SWE, the foundation feels a lot more high touch um, and they've been like, yeah, super helpful. Whereas on Solana, you were, they were helpful in the beginning, but then it was kind of, you're off on your own. Like it's a big ocean. You got to learn how to swim. Mm, interesting. Um, from the fandom side, I could you know, say from experience that both have been spectacular, right? And I think this is potentially in comparison to the Ethereum Foundation, which you know, has a very high, uh, or I should say, ethos of hands-off decentralization. You know, this is the tooling, this is how things work, kind of you know, uh, come help yourself and you know, we'll, we'll guide you with some resources. Um, whereas in Solana and Sui, the foundations are very hands-on. Uh, they're very willing to um, help with resourcing. They're very willing to help with um, guiding through different problems. Chances are, if you come to them with a problem, they've already thought through it and they'll be able to help you, uh, you know, guide you towards a solution. So uh, it seems like we're seeing a, a lot of different, uh, a lot of the same things as well. Um, I, I think we, um, I'm curious to uh, kind of open it uh, to the floor. Do you have any other uh, topics that you would like to discuss? Um, I'm guess I'm guessing like I was curious on the previous question in terms of user cultures uh, differences. Like, do you notice anything from the uh, wallet side? It's actually interesting. Um, I think this is perhaps more. So on the on the Solana side, it's more of users who are looking to chase the existing meta, right? Like obviously there's pump fund trenches. Users are very much chasing, you know, the kind of the, the hopple of money in that sense, but they're very active on chain. Whereas uh, on the SUI side of things, I think people are more curious about like exploring new projects rather than a super high touch on like a specific project in the Solana ecosystem. So like a user will you know be very active on pump fund, whereas in SUI they'll have like a broader distribution of projects that they're engaging with. Um, so I think that that's one marked difference. Wouldn't characterize either as a good or a bad uh, sign, uh, just you know, very different uh, user cultures at the moment. Mm, nice. Fantastic. Uh, I think we're, we're running up on time, uh, but you know, wanna say thank you to uh, everybody for joining us. And uh, we're very excited uh, from Phantom to continue to uh, support Sui. Thank you.